Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of Biblical Encouragement from Across the Pond. I'm DJ with Homegrown Ministries, joined by my friend Glenn Martin uh, from all the way over in Northern Ireland. We're happy to have you here today. Today we're going to talk about um, an interesting topic because the Bible doesn't directly say yay or nay to this. And today's topic is going to focus on do we as Christians have the right to self-defense? So I'm going to pass this over to Glenn to get his thoughts on it, and then I'll add my two cents worth about a half a penny, and we'll go on from there. So Glenn, what do you think? Do Christians have the right to self-defense? Hi, Daniel. Yes, uh, I, I do believe, yes, that Christians do have the right to self-defense. Um, I don't believe God has called anybody to be a doormat by any means. Um, I believe there's a certain balance there has to be maintained. Um, I mean, God has called us to be the head and not the tail. Um, but I'm going to just do a quick reading um, from Romans chapter 12, verse 19. And it says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. The reason why I picked that one, because that sort of sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. Some people... Um, can you set the word self-defense as a way of trying to get around to get their own vengeance on the person? And I think the reason why uh, the writer has put that in, uh, Paul um, has put that there was because sometimes as humans, we're not mentally fit to deal with vengeance on our own. Sometimes it can consume us completely. Now, vengeance and self-control is two different things. Yes, I'm aware of that, but it is, it can, you can be consumed by self-defense. There's, there's a complete difference. If somebody's breaking into your house and, um, I don't know, for example, are you allowed to defend yourself? Absolutely. If somebody breaks into my house, you know what I mean? I'm not going to stand there and let them do what they want. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, let them know that they shouldn't be here. Um, but that's my opinion, obviously. But I know people probably disagree. Um, if somebody hits me in the street, I'll do my best to walk away. You know what I mean? But from, if I'm cornered into a fight, I'll I'll not back down. I'll I'll certainly give my my best. You know, I'm not gonna just car down. I'll certainly stand my ground and, and, and do what I have to do. And um, but I'll also not beat the person to a pulp where I'm gonna kill them. You know, there has to be I mean a, 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 a has to be a balance to say. But that that verse I was just reading from is a lot of people can use that verse um and say, oh, I'm 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 a self defence myself or I'm I'm if you, do you understand what I mean? It, it can be it can be abused. There's certain verses in the Bible that people use and they abuse it. And the point I'm making is that um, uh, self-defense, yes, within reason, is completely normal. Um, but uh, the likes of vengeance and stuff, where it can be manipulated as to, oh, I was self-defense. I, I was just defending myself. But really, what you were doing is maybe you're right, purposely in that person's road to cross paths with them just to get it to get stuck into them you know have a fight with them and um, so you put yourself in their way just to have a fight with them to say oh i have self-defense and it really wasn't at all it was vengeance so you have to be very very careful uh there's a difference between having a righteous anger and uh, an anger that's just pure sin um where there's hatred a righteous anger is where you, you know it's wrong and you're you're angered by it because it's uh, you, you just know that that shouldn't happen you know um so that's, that, that's where I'm going with that there. That's just my opinion on it. But yeah, if you're, are you allowed to defend yourself? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. one of the things you said, because I see this play out in my kids all the time. You tell them, hey, don't touch your brother. And what's that's my right. daughter do? She goes, I'm not touching him. I'm not touching him. I'm not touching him. And it's like, okay, you're instigating him. <laughs> yeah. And that's what you're talking about. You're talking about if you know somebody that doesn't like you, lives on a particular street, and you're purposely going in that direction, you know, to start something, and then you go, oh, well, you know, now that's I'm not, defending not. myself. That's not right, right? You have nope. to, you have to be wise. And you know, the other thing I think of too is, Glenn. Unlike me, you're a military man, right? Could you imagine how a country would exist without being able to defend itself? You know, if a country just said, "Oh, well, you know, if you want to take us over, fine." Like that's not, that's not how life works. No, not how um, life works. So I, I agree with you. There's a difference between self-defense and. Uh, going out of your way to, to attack somebody and you know you have to have wisdom there's definitely something he said there about wisdom have you ever had a situation uh that you want to talk about where you you've either done it right or done it wrong 
Oh, there's been a lot of things, <laughs> I suppose. Um, well, I, I, I done security as well most of my life there, um, re retail security. And I suppose there was a few times maybe where, uh, I suppose maybe I was confronted and I handled it wrong um, where I shouldn't have. So um, I guess uh, it's a lure. I'm just, my, my camera's messed up. All right, <laughs> I'll keep talking. <laughs> yeah, take um, no, so um, yeah, there, there has been a few times now where I have, I have realised that I was, I was, you know, I, I should have handled a lot more better, a lot more wisdom, and that sometimes that God deal with things. Because sometimes whenever you're dealing with things yourself, it can um, make it worse. You think, oh, my way is better, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes you're safer just letting God sort it himself. There's, there's, trust me, there's people in my life at the minute where I would just literally love just to. Uh, <laughs> you know, but you can't, you can't do that. That's wrong, and it's 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 not very biblical, obviously. But there's there's things I'm just saying. You know what, Lord, you're just going to have to deal with these people yourself because if I do it my way, I'm going to end up being locked up. So, um, I know it doesn't sound very Christian like, but let's be honest about it. If any Christian, any normal Christian out there who doesn't feel anger, who doesn't get cross or frustrated, um, you know, 90, 99 percent of people, human beings, get cross and angry and frustrated at someone in their life who's wronged them. So, um, there's a difference. There's a big, massive difference between self-defense and going out of your way to cause the problem. But um, if I had to have you self-defense wisdom, like, yeah, I've had people come at me with, with a knife once and and work when I was doing security, and I had I had to do something like it. I wasn't gonna let them do anything to me, you know. But that was different. You know, you don't understand what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's all about using wisdom, right? You yep. have to be wise in, in your freedom to have self-defense, right? God didn't give us freedom to attack people. That's against his calling. However, if we are, if our life is threatened, I definitely think that we have the right to, to defend ourselves, like in your situation. So on to my mini sermon. <laughs> so bear with me. If uh, it doesn't make sense, stop me. But so here's what I compiled. So I start with, I think we have to understand the mind of God, right? Because again, the Bible doesn't anywhere come out and say, hey, you as a Christian or you as an Israelite in the Old Testament have the right to self-defense. But one of the things God does say in Exodus comes from Exodus 22, verses 2 to 3. It says, if a thief is caught breaking in at night and has struck a fatal blow, the defender is not guilty of bloodshed. But if it happens after sunrise, the defender is guilty of bloodshed. So what this is getting at is God is essentially saying, if someone breaks in and you don't know their intent because it's nighttime and you end up killing that person in self-defense, you're not guilty. But if it's daytime and you can see they're just a thief and you can get them out without killing them, then that's what you should do. And if you kill someone in the sunrise when their intent was to just steal, that's not acceptable to God. So the mind of God there in my mind is, is telling us that we have the right to self-defense because in your situation, you said this earlier, if someone breaks into my house at night, I'm going to do what I have to do to defend myself. Exactly. God yep. is clearing the Israelites of any type of guilt if they end up harming someone who breaks in at night because you know the, there's a lot that can go wrong when you can't see clearly or understand what's happening. Then when we look at Jesus, who again is God, in Luke 22, 36, when he's talking about you know, going and, and leaving his disciples now. He's going to be crucified. He's going to die. He's going to rise again. He tells them in Luke chapter 22, 36, and we're going to go all the way through 38. Jesus says to them, but now if you have a purse, take it and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that you must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. The disciples said, see, Lord, here are two swords. And Jesus says, that's enough. Now, what's interesting about this is Jesus is telling his disciples to go and buy a weapon that's meant to harm other people. But there's 12 of them, right? And so they buy two swords. And what's Jesus say? Okay, two is enough. It proves that it's not meant for aggression, right? 12 guys with two swords isn't very effective offensive force. However, two swords would be enough to defend them from wild animals or maybe others that are that are out there to, to harm them now i know what you're thinking as a christian or as someone who's familiar with the bible but dj jesus tells us to turn the other cheek right so let's look at that verse so that verse comes from matthew 5 38 and 39 
Jesus says, you've heard it was said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And I think this plays into what you were saying, Glenn. There are times when you have the ability to not escalate the situation. Someone slaps you, that doesn't mean that you now have the right to kill them. That's right. And God's interest is for you to turn the other cheek. This verse, in my opinion, is also talking about personal slights. So if someone makes fun of me or, you know, you look at like a joke that escalates or a prank that escalates, you prank me, you know, I step out of my house and I step into water and get all my shoes wet because you put a bowl of water there. I could turn around and do something worse to you, or I could take it on the cheek and, and move on with my life. And that's really what you were getting at when you looked at the Romans verse, where Paul reminds us to not take revenge, um, because it's this isn't God doesn't want us to be vengeful people. Vengeance is is the Lord's, and we should give that to Him. But in the heat of the moment, I do think, based on what we're seeing, we have the right to self defense. Now, to really go on top of this, the key here is wisdom, right? It's it's being wise about what's happening. So. Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And I think a lot of people think meek means weak, and it doesn't. And here's why. The person that I think of that was called meek in the Bible is Moses. In Numbers 12, 3, it says, now that man, Moses, was very meek, more than all people who were on the face of the earth. But we know Moses was strong enough to kill a man, an Egyptian, with one punch, right? He's one punch man. So he's obviously not weak. What meek means is knowing your strength and choosing not to use it. So in a situation where Moses would be slapped, he could punch back and potentially kill the guy. But knowing that, he is the meekest man on the earth and he would choose not to. Now, Moses did have a temper, and we saw time and time again his temper affected him, and it's actually the reason why he doesn't get into the promised land, because of his temper. Um, He disobeys God at the end of his life by smacking the rock that God tells him just to speak to. And so the point here being is that we should strive to be meek, and we're going to make mistakes. I mean, if someone hits me, I'm probably going to swing back, right? But (laughs) if I have the ability to be wise and have the time to think about it, I should choose not to. However, if my life is in danger, based on what we're seeing here, I do believe we have the right to self-defense. That's my two cents worth about a half a penny. What do you think, Glenn? I think it's very, it's very wise words there. Um, the the part where you're um you're saying about the disciples, they only, they only, they only got two swords. I never actually looked at like that there. Um, but that there's sort of Jesus saying, yes, defend yourselves, protect yourselves, no harm in that. But he's not, he's not raising them up to have an army. He wasn't telling everyone, go and get a sword. He was just enough just to, to, to put out a, a, a presence there to say, well, listen, we're not just here unarmed. We have got the resources if we need it, but we don't want to. You know, Jesus is a very, very wise man, and he wants us to be wise. He doesn't want us to be foolish. He doesn't want us to be ignorant. He wants us to be very clever, very, very crafty and, 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 and wise in what, what God wants. But you're right, right in what you're saying about the meek. A lot of people do think the word meek means weak, but it's not. It's people who are wise. It's people who are, um, they know they have the ability to do something, but they don't. They don't react. They act. You know, they act. They don't react. I think that's what I was trying to say. But you're, I meant to say there was one other situation there you were saying about myself in terms of uh, self-control. Um, but my last job there, the, the, I was uh, doing marshalling, sex security, and there was a fellow there who um, he just kept, literally kept pushing me. <laughs> so uh, obviously there was there came a point in time where I had to act because I got to the point where I was cornered. So um, that was that. But that was completely fine. My work didn't, you know, they didn't sack me or anything, like, you know, or anything out there. I wasn't kicked out the door as such. It was something that was justified. Because it was clearly seen on CCTV on numerous occasions where this person had been constantly trying to provoke a row, um, and then it was literally as backed in their corner where I had no choice. So there is times where some people are nearly afraid to, like you said, turn the other cheek. But you can't turn the other cheek. Sometimes you have to actually stand your ground. You know what I mean? And there, there's times where you can turn the cheek where somebody's, you know, 
gossiping or badmouthing you or something and it's, it's annoying, it's really affecting you. Sometimes you just stay for just saying, Lord, deal with them, sort them out. Because you know what, God's way is always the best way. That's yeah. what I always think about. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely the truth. You know, if you have the ability to let God sort it out, let him sort it out. In the heat of the moment, I do believe we have the right to self-defense. Um, but if you have the ability to be peaceful, that's what we're called to be. And yes. I think that that's the, the fine line, right? And it's yeah, it's having the wisdom to, to understand the difference. And, you know, the good news is wisdom is not intelligence. They're very different things. So I always say I'm not an intelligent guy. I'm probably as dumb as a mud fence. But I ask God every day for wisdom to help me make the right choices. And the book of James reminds us that if any of you lack wisdom, ask and you will be given it. So it's not intelligence. It's something different. It's street smarts, for lack of a better word. So um, the other thing that, that I think of, and I can't now remember the verse reference, but it's, um, oh, now this is, it's, being a dad's hard. The whole thing now is just gone. I initially had a verse in my head, but started to think about what the verse was and now that's gone so you're not going to get that one today it was good though i, sh I assure you <laughs> what, <are the> <laughs> what about what about yourself daniel have you ever been in a situation where you have self-defense well i used to not act like a christian if that makes sense so there was a time in my life when uh um i was mad at god so i've always believed god exists but there was a time when i was very very frustrated and i uh acted like he didn't exist didn't have too many friends um but there was a time when uh i was walking in in school we're talking back in high school and i had an, an ozfest shirt on so i don't know if you're familiar with ozfest but ozzy osbourne holds a concert, why yes yes yes, you know, yes. Uh, and so all these metal bands come and i'm wearing the shirt and i have all these metal bands in the back of my my shirt and i was a senior at the time and kid i didn't know was just you know a jock ish guy just trying to be tough and was reading off the uh the names of my my shirt and making fun of them essentially is the idea and uh, i just turned around i dropped my books that were in my hand and i grabbed him by the collar and i threw him up against the locker and you know that ended that problem very quickly was that the appropriate thing to do as a christian no but at the time i really didn't act like a christian so um but now given the nature of, of who i am i wouldn't even wear an auspice shirt so let's let's be clear there but uh you know if someone is making fun of you I think that's something that you walk away from, right? And yeah. and again, if I was a Christian at the time, you know, and not just one in name only, I would have walked away. But yeah, there's definitely been times in my life where where I have a quick temper. And I've I've acted as such, and I didn't make a whole lot of friends. Um, but you know, uh, if I could go back and do it differently, probably. And I actually think it's really funny because Kelly and I went to the same high school, and there are definitely people who see us together now, and they look at Kelly and go. You're such a sweet girl. Why'd you marry him? <laughs> right? And so it's, there's something to be said about that. I had a complete transformation of my life because of, of giving up who I was to follow Christ. And so you can have that yourself too today. You know, here's the, the altar call, right? If, That's if exactly you're watching right. this video and you're not a Christian, man, you can have what we have. Um, I am, and I freely admit, I'm a completely different person than I was. I hated who I was, um, and I wouldn't have been able to change it myself. The only reason why I'm able to change it, the only reason why I'm able to get slapped and not swing back is because of the Holy Spirit that resides in me. So um, I can't do it on my own. I don't have the willpower to do it on my own. Like you said, if somebody cuts me off in traffic, I want to get out of the car and pound them out their face, in, right? But I, I don't do that, and I have the ability to not do that because of the Holy Spirit that resides in me, not because of my own you know, ability or my own willpower. I'm not... I'm not a good person. I really am not. And uh, if I had it my way, I would I would live like that. So, yeah. But uh, well, anything else, Dad? Glenn, now that I've yammered on long enough. No, no. I, I I'm I'm I, I'm glad that you you did, yeah you mentioned about an altar call as to as anybody want to give their life to the Lord. Now's a good time. As as any. I mean, um, some people like I know we're probably sidetracking here, but then again, maybe this is what the Holy Spirit does. I mean, some people think they've got to their no age to get right with God and sometimes that doesn't work out that way so if maybe you're watching this and maybe God is speaking to you feel and you know come to him yeah none of us are promised to tomorrow, just reading why you're watching this you might be a 15 year old kid thinking you've got the world you know ahead of you but your your world could end now I mean the your your next minute is not guaranteed and that's right so we need to we need to be mindful of that and uh, you know 
if you're waiting for the end of your life, that that could be soon. So, and with COVID, could be sooner rather than later. And hopefully, it's not. But if you're listening to this, uh, seriously think about these things. Also, if, if you disagree or have something that you think we missed or something you want to comment on, please let us know in the comments below. We, we do really love to hear from you guys. Can't promise we'll respond. Uh, we're both very busy people, and we do this as our, our side hustle. So, um, but we do. I really am encouraged when you guys reach out. Um, so please, you know, if you have anything to say, let us know. Any final thoughts, Glenn? No, no, just um, I think we touched on a good, a lot of good things there. Um, like I said, if anybody else has any comments, then just far away. Um, but we're always appreciative of you know people who are watching and listening in and commenting. So it's it's nice. Well, guys, I hope you have a good day. Thanks for sticking with us even through all the technical issues on on my end. I obviously shouldn't use a computer <laughs> as I can't. And uh, Christian friends, as I always say, please continue to be the salt of the earth, be the light of the world. Go encourage somebody else today because the world desperately needs it. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.